Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Woodworking Wisdom Workshops. Sorry for a, a short delay if you're watching live. Um, so we're here back in the workshops. As I said, my name's Craig, and we're, we're here with Jason. Um, and we're looking at part two of our Adirondack chair build. Now, yesterday, we looked at layout. We looked at plans. We talked about different timbers. Uh, we, we, uh, we cut and started playing and shaping a few components. We looked at... Uh, the kind of side rails, side supports, seat supports. Um, since we've been away, we've made a couple of other components as well, all from the plans. And today we're going to start assembling these bits. So let's have a look at the underside of the chair and have a look at what we will be doing. Right. So you can see here the, the, the side bits that we that we cut out yesterday. We've got some internal slat supports just there. Today, I'm gonna be cutting out some of these support struts, some of these curvy bits you see underneath. Jason's gonna do a really big glue up just to maximize the timber um, to, to make some of these back slats. So let's bounce straight over to Jason to, uh, to start this glue up, Jace. Over to you, mate. So hi then guys, so as Craig said, we're going to do the back splats. So we've done obviously most of our machining now. So what we're really trying to do is get things done. We looked at the back splats, it's amazing, and this doesn't pick this up on the camera too well, how much these vary. So this is the chum plug. Bottom of this I've measured is 45 mil, the top is 68. So there's almost 25 mil an inch difference between top and bottom. So quite a size difference on those. To try and maximize what we get out of the boards, we're going to glue it together, make it one panel. It will make it more beneficial. Yeah, we've got a few glue joints to do, but actually, hopefully, it's going to work really nicely. So, we've got our boards on the bed. Coming all the way across, that shows where things are. These aren't glued. We've got a bit we can take out. What I want to do with our boards, we've straightened all the edges. There's a little bit of twist, but we're going to roll these up on edge. So bring them up. So it gives me my three boards we've got to glue together. I'm going to get a little bit clamp on there. Let's put a clamp on this end. Get out to this end. We can put a clamp on. Just makes it a bit easier to hold it. We've got our glue. We're going to use an exterior glue. The church is on oh, your chair. It's going to get a bit damp at some point. Don't need loads. Gonna stop there. I'm gonna use silly glue brush. So this has got a silicon tip. Stop it sticking to the tip of the glue brush over a period of time as it dries out, it'll peel off. We can brush that along. As we said, we don't need loads. So I've looked this morning, made sure we've lined things up. Things are gonna come together nicely. Gonna brush that all the way along. Nice even coat, a bit more there, we're going to pull along. So the clamps, by using the clamps, make it so much more supported, if you like, while you do that. So board comes out, drop them over. We've got that big pencil line coming all the way across. We want to line that back up. Bring that one in. Push it back to there. That board needs to come down just a little bit to line up. So I'm trying to line my line across that I've got as a diagonal. Something stop us marking the front edge. We want that front edge. We don't want dancing it with the clamps or anything. We're going to use that as a cut line or a straight edge for our template when we cut them out next week. So that's quite important. If I was doing something like a table, might go with a rubber jaw that will stick on the front. But I want to get uniform pressure all the way along. So I'm not going to use the rubber one today. Just going to finger tighten this. So we've got our tight bond on there. So water resistant. Going to clamp this end. Now I'm actually right handed. So I'm going to clamp using some small clamps to level up this end of the board. Look where clamps are great for this because they fit in underneath where the sash clamps are. They won't raise things up. This just makes things a lot quicker and easier for me to fight against any twist in the board or anything. And this time of year has been fantastic. We've machined things, we had some hot days, and then suddenly get a bit of damp weather in the air. Boards are twisting and all sorts. So, on here, I've got a little bit of step. 
position. I'm going to tighten up. The boards have also made sure that they are rotated. So grain direction up and down, not so important for what we're going to use them for, but just a good technique to have. I want three clamps. At the moment, we have two. This one I've just pinned up. Just want to get that into there. So it comes across. Let's just see if we can come off a bit. Better. Now we can feel anything on here. What do I want to fight against? So undo, far end. Push down. Push down on there if I want to. I can tweak up and down. Now the clamps on the far end, the small left clamps, really helping now because it's keeping things level. So I'm trying to get this nice and level. We're good. This end, I've got quite a big step here. Going to get that. So we can do a similar thing. Play with my hands. Pull things about. See how things feel. It's amazing how you can wiggle the boards about. So if you get a spot that you don't like, it's a bit high. I can move things up and down nicely, level things out. That's good. Nice and clean on there. And we haven't got loads and loads of glue in. A little bit of water on a damp cloth. A tiny bit there. So our silly glue brush has plastic scraper tip. Clean anything off there nice and easily. So you can see how we can glue up something as a larger panel. Um, get it nice and flat. We can move things about. Use those clamps to an advantage. I'm going to clean the other side. I want Craig, though, just to sort out those cross ties. So I'll let you do that. So what we're going to do, just a quick one before... Um I start cutting and shaping other stuff. The, the glue that Jason was using is the Type Bond Green, so Type Bond Free Ultimate, a great outdoors glue. Um, it's got a little bit more open time the, to to give those give you the time to get those fiddly components into position. Um, really strong, quite quite dark in colour though. So if you're looking for a darker glue to see less glue line with dark and darker timbers, this is a good one to go for. It um, takes a little bit longer to go off strong, about half hour, 40 minutes uh, clamp time, but about 24 hours to actually go off before you can start cutting it and planing it and stuff. But a cracking glue, and then you can buy it in massive containers as well if you get to use a lot of it. So as Jason rightly said, what I'm going to look at is cutting and shaping the cross ties. All right. Now, there's two different sizes. We need two long ones and one short one. So I'm going to head over to the mitre saw, cut these to length, and um, then we'll come back to Jace for a bit more marking out and planing. So let's go on over. So we are over here at the mitre saw. Now you can see the, uh, the cross ties, and they're clearly marked, actually, for the different lengths. And the difference in length here is the width of your, actually, the boards that you're using. All right? So a 19 mil. So that's the difference we need. And we need two long ones, one short one. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do, I've got my board here, you can see. And it's a board that we skimmed up and planed yesterday. So it's nice and clean and square and planed all around. But to give me a... Sh but these, these ends aren't square, so I'm going to square those off first. So I'm going to slide it that way. Just offer it up before I pull the trigger and just take a little nibble off that end. Okay. Now I'm guaranteed square now. This is beautifully clean and square. And the blade that I've got in there is one of the Cup Pro blades. So it leaves an absolutely fantastic finish, which often there's never any need for cleanup after. Almost no breakout. Okay, so how am I going to do that? I can measure. Yeah, I can measure the length of this and then make a mark on my piece of material if I wanted to, like this. But what I can do, because I've got the luxury of all this kind of flip stop setup with scales and whatnot 
I can use it that way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this. I'm going to isolate my machine. Just flick it off for a second. Plunge that down. Lock it in position. Then I can bring this into my blade. Problem is with the setup I've got is I run out of travel on my uh, on my rail here with my scale. So my actual stop won't reach now. Now that was done with an intention because on my Bosch chop saw, I need to slide the fences to get a full tilt bevel there. So I intentionally stop this here, but it doesn't stop me using the flip stop because all I do, I've got a little bit of wood really keep me. Now this, we've had this for a good few years and it's got keep me written on it because we don't want it chucked away. So my template goes in, it goes against my blade. Then my piece of material come and my timber comes over and then I'll offer up my flip stop to that, knowing then that I've got a complete dimension there. That can come out of the way. That is always repeat, repeat, repeat. I know I only really need two long ones, but it gives me an absolute guarantee that when I slide my material up to my stop, I'm going to get that dimension. It's a really nice, quick, and easy way to set your length. Okay, so here we go. And plunge back. Wait for the blade to stop. Right, one component which you'll find is exactly the same as that. I need two long ones, one short. So here's another long one coming out. Up to my stop, back against the fence. Plunge down, push back. Okay. And there's the two longer ones that I need now. Now I don't need to recalibrate and measure everything at this point. Because remember, the one short one that I need is between these two points. I've got a couple of bits of scrap here from yesterday, all right, that I know is the three quarters. So I'm going to put those two bits of scrap in there, knowing that those two add up to those two. That comes in there again and cut again. Make sure nothing shifts. There we are. All right, beautiful clean cuts. And then what I've got is my short. So then we've got the two long and one short to start making our cross ties. Now I'm going to take these over to Jace. He's going to do a bit of planing and a bit of marking out. Was, sorry, was the, um, against the blade or the teeth? It was just touching the teeth. Yeah, just touching the teeth. There's a subtle difference between the teeth and the blade, but just touching the teeth will give you a more precise result. Right, so I'll take these over to, to Jace. He's going to do a bit of marking out, a little bit of planing too. I've got to do a big job on one. I'm just job if you like. Give us just look at our template. Now, this is the template for the side rail. Now, I think if I hold it up, you can see the holes. Let me get my pencil sniper. There's two bits that get joined together here. It's not actually a right angle corner. It looks a right angle, but it's not quite. So I've already set up the sliding bevel. So I've got that as an angle. So I've laid it down on there. I can check that. That's great. Really easy to do with something like a sliding bevel. So in reality, the shorter one, we don't need at the moment. What I am going to do with the short one, let's just have a quick look. I'm going to turn it around. Because I've got to do this so they're here anyway. Position it. I want to draw that curve in. One there. Just going to move that for a second. These two is the ones I've got to join together. Clean room with the grain now. Which way do they look better? And this is just a quick thing, just aesthetics, if you like, that way. So we're going to have that's our join. Going to draw our curve. On these, okay, that one, we can draw our curve. That I'm going to put there. This one, I need to do that edge. So this board, if I swing this round, it's going to be the top one. So I've got to create a chamfered edge on the top here. So we get that and we can glue that together. 
So I can put it in my vise. As we said, we've already set the sliding bevel up, so we can put it on, we can see where we've got to take material from. Back to there, checking the grain direction, see which way I can plane. Now I plane. Now I've already just set the plane up, so I've tilted the blade very slightly, lateral movement just right over on one side. I think we can probably, let's just bring it out. So I've got my lateral mover here, moved it off the center a bit, so I'm deliberately working on one side. My positioning where I have the plane will alter how much cut I want to take as well. So if I'm more on my right hand side, the cut will be deeper. If I come to the left hand, a little bit shallower. So I can vary how much cut I want, just using that to also create that chamfer. Difference in cut you can probably hear. Let's have a look and see what's happening. Turn it around, I've got to go that way. We're close to an angle. Want something more central now. We've set an angle, gonna bring the lever back. Let's try and make it one shaving. Now we're set on that bit that we've created that slight angle, following through. Now some of you are gonna say, I could do this on my table saw. Yeah, possibly. And this might be quicker, just to get your hand plane out, a few fine shavings. Double check it. Nearly got it. And what I'm looking at as I'm going through now, I'm getting an equal shaving. I just want to lose my little pencil line on there, which we've just done. We need to check our angle. Go, oh, let me turn it around and take it out. Okay, that's good. We've got our boards, they're going to come back into here. So next thing I just need to do on this, I want to label where that comes to. That's that. On there, Jason. And I also just need to mark our curve out. So I'm going to turn it around. Get it equal. Draw the curve down through there. Now this top board, you could do whatever shape you like. Now, my important one, just to help Craig in a minute, I want that bit back. All right, so that's the three of those marked up. How are we doing? Got anything question-wise or are we? Yeah, we've got a couple of questions. Firstly, try not to bump your microphone on the bench. It's oh, okay. making a bit of in interference right, okay. for these guys, getting right, a bit of right, crackling. Um, the other thing is uh, with the, is that a number four plane you were using? I used a number four white bit lighter in weight not as heavy so it's easier to balance so it's not got that weight to support i don't need the four and a half which is wider so the four will work nicely cool right? and with the with well you've seen it i can so i can see it over here to answer one of your questions um could you bring the clamping back over could you bring it what back we over just got yep, a question there so this will answer your question about leaving it horizontal there we go so right. once so once so. it's clamped you can just tuck it against the wall out of the way. It hasn't got to stay flat on the bench as long as you've clap, clamped it securely. So that's all fine. And another question about the clamping, could, would it be quicker and easier to use the, the clamping calls? Calls, like little kind of teeth, the U-shape, kind of clamping grip tack type things. Yeah. 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 Not a fan myself because they tend to market timber a lot, yeah. to be honest. And this traditional kind of sash clamp style is kind of, the preferred well, by us, I think. Yeah. Okay. And have we got any hints and tips on gluing tantalized timber? You might have issues with that. And that was something we discussed mm. actually earlier. The, we had the question yesterday, could you use tantalized stuff? It's going to be more difficult to glue. My other worry is the fact of when it dries out. And it's leading more to with the frame that we're going to do when we start putting stuff together for that main frame, we've got to glue it together. And we've got some sections that are almost, if you like, laminated. Yeah, wet stuff. It's not going to glue as well. Yeah, and so you've got to get it as dry as you can. But you've cut into it, so it will start drying. But what I've found personally is polyurethane PU glue um, will work well on uh, treating tantalized stuff because it's it'll stick to anything. It's great stuff. Messy, but really strong. So Jason's just handed me these over. He's planed a. a sort of slight uh, angle down the length of one there. And he's marked out these curves. So what I'm going to do is hit the bandsaw, of course, and um, cut these curves out. So follow me over. 
All right, so we have three of these to cut out. I'm going to cut out one at a time. It's a very, very slow curve, quarter inch six TPI blade. All right, I'm actually just going to lift that up a smidge just so you guys can, can see the cut of it. Here we go. Right, so I'm just going to slow and steady follow this line. And I'm probably just going to leave the line visible, only just there. Right, so a really slow start. And what I'm doing, I'm not starting straight and then curving straight in. I'm starting, I'm following that arc instantly. There we go. Just get the teeth bedded in, slow and steady, and then roll it on round. A continuous curve. There we go. So my pencil blade is subtly, only just waist side of the pencil line. Watching my thumbs, keeping them far out of the way on the corners. Now at this stage, I could pull through to get my thumbs out of the way, but I feel I lose a little bit of direction control. So as long as I'm absolutely clear where that blade is going to exit, and I've got my thumbs on the extreme corners, slow and steady, Pop out, come round, stay to the houses. Right, so that's one. Pop that there. And we'll just rattle these other ones off as quick as there. I'm going to retain these offcuts, these components, because they might come in handy a bit later. So let's just quickly rattle through these. If your bounce all set up well, you've got confidence that your cuts are going to be bob on every time. And you really get a, get a feel for cutting curves and cutting quick. Not that it's a race. Take your time, get it right. Again, thumbs on the outside. And pop. All right. So that's two. And the final one. There we go, slow and steady, or not so slow. I'm going quite quick with this. I am rather quite used to following these curves from this particular bandsaw, so me and this bandsaw get along really well. There we go. Roll on round, slow down and pop. Right, so what we've got there now are the three components we need, remember? All right, all just about identical. One short, two long. Okay, so those are going over to Jason now to uh, to tickle and fettle and get perfectly clean. There we go, sir. Which, can I can I have the uh, which one? I knew I you want? were going to want these. Which one did I need? Right, uh, all yours. You right. want the one that you put marks on, didn't you? There we right. go. Great. I think that one. All right. Short one. We know we don't need. What we're trying to do is make up now that right angle section which is in there. So these have got to come together. Make up that corner has a slight angle. Got to glue it together now. So we've got our, our chamfered edge we did. We're going to do something. I'm just double checking now. Let's have a look. Make sure we're going in the right way, which is in there. Want to glue this together. But the problem with this little bit of an angle so what tends to happen is it will slide forward a little bit when you tighten the clamps. Old fashioned thing we used to do, a couple of pins, tap them in. Gonna cut them off. Seems a bit wasteful of three nails and I just want to grab that short board that Craig cut. Going to come over a bit more. Just want something just in behind it. Step it up just a little bit. So the board in behind, nearest the front device, that's a little bit higher. My board to go on. Look at that way. Just want to push that into place now. I've got my hammer. 
what am I doing in reality? Just putting the three indents on the back there. So where I've cut those nails off. We then, let's just have a quick look, take it out. Seems a bit brutal, doesn't it? We've got to go in there. I can line that up. It is there. Not that, not that. Then we want to clamp this up. So, I'm going to turn it round, make sure it's same more again. I'm still going to use that rail. My three dots that way. Got to be a little bit higher here because I know that I've got that little bit of angle. I'm also trying to make sure that I don't block things with my head and the camera. A little bit there. Oh, glue. So back to that tight bond three again. A line down through. So the nail points that I've just indented will pull up a bit. So my clamps, I'm hoping, should do. Just get on there. Can't quite bad. Okay, get onto that corner. If I can get a stir point, will be good. Clamp slipping back a little bit. So let me slide the head back, bring it up. Better. One. Gonna have to grab the other end. Now, what I'm really gonna go and do. I was hoping I'd give you some really small clamps. I just need to just a little bit longer. Now I'm trying to use the extra board as a cushion point. Something to pull against. Now, as I said, the reason for doing the three panel pins or the nails, if you like, is just the fact that it stops things sliding. We created an angle with the plane. If we glue it up with the glue, it will want to slide up as I tighten the clamps. So those three pins that are inside are going to hold it, stop any movement. So we've got it glued together as our right angle. Let's move that clamp around. Down on here. Now the joy with this at the moment, I can still clean up the faces later. I'm thinking of time a little bit on here, what we've got. Even the bottom one here, we can clean up. All right. So I'm going to move that one for a second, which I do want that. So we've got this aspect in here. You're trying to allow glue to dry. So let's just slack that off. Want that one out? Put them back together for you. If you're at home, time will be better. Okay. So we've got our right angle corner. I'm going to put that out of the way. We don't need that one now. We did that normal thing in here a little bit of we need the right angle bit glued up. Give us time. So we've got that done. We've done something a bit decorative on the back. It doesn't just have to be plain curved. So two long ones that Craig cut, one short one. Short one I just need to clean up. This is going back a little bit to what we did yesterday. You can go with whatever you like. So we could have spoke shape. Some of you kind of said, mm, all right, let me just grab something that really easy and sensible to use if you don't want to go with your spoke shape. Sanding block. We'll even get this really quick and easy. A bridge of paper, like anything, is a tool. So we can easily work this. Slide along. Two hands, support it nicely either side. Follow three. Check with fingers how that feels. That's pretty good. So we've got, hopefully, nice flowing curve down through, even with the abrasive. So quick and easy to do. You can go, as we said, spoke shave, razor paper, whole range of things. Just tidying up a little bit now. Want a few of those clamps just out the way. I'm just going to put back on there. Move my hammer and bits. Things we did yesterday. We made long rails, made short ones, which you kind of haven't seen. So these, what do these do? These are going to fit into there. 
over the top. I think we can probably see that. So then, now on each of these templates, there is the hose, center line in this case. On the back one, there's a few important lines. There's the position of where that corner bracket is. There's the positions, the center line point down, or oh, if I can find it, that line there. So all those things come into play on this bit. Now we're going to start to put that frame together. So we're going to make, seems like two frames to get us going. We're going to make an H, H shape section, and then we've got the other bit. So we need these two. So I've transferred a center line, which is there, down round. You can see the panther line. It will come bear with us, which like I've got these to there. So I've got my center line drawn up front. So all I've done is a square off the bottom edge, my line, come back right over. So we've got our screw marks. I'm going to have those, which way you are, should we go? We'll go with that way. Crane's rail. It's got to go between these. Be screwed in. First thing I want to do on here, let's get all this drill bits. Small one, we're going to want. Holes, they look right, they're reamed out. I'm just going to do snail cutter. Now, this is the outside. The reason I want to snail cut these and countersink them in is so the screws don't interfere when this is positioned into the other bit of the frame. So the screw heads aren't pushing things apart. That's done. We can then grab my block. I need my square and the pencil. So I just want this line back up through. Drawn that one. Bring it up to there. So we're around. Move that one that we need in a second. Just to join those on. Now, occasion with an extra set of hands. So I've made up simple camping block. Nothing too elaborate. So the idea of this, I can go on, I've got a centre block. So this is out the waste that we had yesterday. All I've done with this is use my marking gauge to find the centre, scratch a line down it, put it round. Stick on a couple of little bits of abrasive paper, stop it slipping all over the place when it's in position. Is it that necessary? It makes life easy for me to do. Line up, either end, bring up the clamp block. That's in position. Stretch my clamp. We can put this on. Just checking where things are. I'm going to come off a little bit. Can I shout if I'm moving too far out of the image, can you? Okay. No, it's all good. All, right. good. all fine. All right. So what we've done, we clamp that on. Our outside is here. We've got the recess where the screws are going. The bracket, that's now squarely and parallel to our line. We need to be offset by the amount. So I'm going to turn it around. Our bracket that we cut, Craig cut over there on the curve, can be on. Stretch my clamp again. I'm going to put it this side. Just lining things up. I want to come in a bit. I want to get it level with the bottom. Flush down here. So that clamps it. Now the jewelry with what I've just done, that holds everything, makes my, my life easier. We now want drill bit. So I've gone small drill, two mil. Do you need to do this? Most screws these days, yes, they do have drill head. They will actually cut a hole. But I always have that scenario if I'm worried about things splitting. So for this, I still get back to that old technique of counter drilling, if you like. Put a pilot hole in. So through with this, we can do quite easy through there. That's great. A little bit of glue. Why not put the glue on first? Because I find it sticks to the drill, but 
Everything I've done that I like is make sure that we've reamed out the holes on where we're pushing through now, just holding things in place. I put the clamp back in, just seeing where we are. Now, what we're using, we're using a wood spur, stainless steel screw. Okay, these are 50 mil long, they will go through moist stainless so we don't get any corrosion problems. Just taking the torque setting up on the drill. The other thing I've got, and I'll show you in a second, just checking where we are, is a limiter. So the torque bit's in there, on my way, Craig. I've set it to the screw head to limit how far we go in. Sorry. You said snail cutter. Snail cutter. What do you mean? Right? I know what you mean. So, Can you just explain? We've got a question. What is so the snail, snail cutter? Snail cutter is actually an engineering tool. So it's a countersink. Hopefully, let's see if I can do that a bit better. Yeah, that's good. All right. It gives you a chapter free countersink hole. It's fantastic for doing this sort of thing. Really, it's a bit of a shame because the engineers have kept these a secret. Great for sheet metal work, brass work, that sort of thing. But they will cut woodwork really nicely. So bear with me. Look at this. Look. How about that for a counter sunk? Um, now, good thing is these days, and we do do what I would class as quick change zippy type things that fit in a cordless drill. It's quick and easy to do. So that will fit straight in. Really nice. All right. Yeah, big fan of those myself. Love them. Super clean. They come in a couple of different sizes as well. So much easier, isn't it? Yeah, love it. Okay. So I have a little thing which I've got in there, if I can find the right drill now, with that limiter. Um, so my torque bit that I've got for the screws is inside there. It's got a rubber bung I can tighten up to lock this in place. We can adjust how deep we go. So I can get my screws flush not keep pulling them in all the way through. Um, I'm a bit fussy like that. I want the screws to look nice, even though you're not going to see these ones. So let's put these in. Stops. Right. So one side down. Yeah, I've got that one. I want to pull that in a bit more. So I'm just going to back the screw out a bit. Take it back in. That's better. Pull that up. We can take our bracket off on the inside. Going to turn this one and put him down on the bench for a second. Got to do the same here. Right, let's move things over so hopefully you can see my funny bracket thing. My board. Again, this is just really about finding the middle quickly and easily. You could draw a couple more pencil lines if you like. That involves getting the ruler, the pencil. If I'm doing batch things like this, it can be really nice just to lay that on, get your position, put a clamp on. Chine it up. This one can lay on there. Go go in there. Just got to move a few things so we don't push it off the back of the bench. That's better. We want our clamp. We can put this in. So same as really what we've just done. Just checking things on the far side. Bit difficult to hold. I could put it in the vice, but then I'm working back to front. Just realised I'm off on there. Ha ha ha! Craig's boat. But you know that. Sorry. We've got a question, Wally. There. Okay. Woodwork learner says, "Could you pocket hole? Would it be stronger?" Um. You could pocket hole. The chair, if you go with what we've got as instruction sheet and you look at, they've given you all your screw holes. My view on this bit for a pocket hole, this screw goes all the way through from the outside into that rail. So you should get a bit more structural strength because you're going all the way through instead of coming in from the side. Yeah. So I think you're probably better off screwing yeah. through into then yeah. if you think pocket hole, you're coming in. Yeah. I, I think there. you could pocket hole, absolutely. There's nothing stopping you. You're just going to be mindful of so, where. And what, what this does, the, the screw holes that you provided with the plans, helps you with alignment. It gets every component in the right place. You might have to measure some bits, but the screw holes really help you line that up. Okay. And I'm going back, another question on the countersink. The um, 
kind of chatter free, you know, the bouncing and the kind of rough finish you get with regular countersinks, you really don't get with the snail type countersinks. They're kind of chatter free, um, super clean cut. And I, I've used them on hardwood, softwood, plastics, and aluminium as well. Um, I tend to not use them on steel because um, I like them to stay sharp as long as I can, really. But um, non ferrous and, and all sorts of uh, timbers, yeah, they are terrific. I tuned into those some years ago, so I, I tend not to use anything else now. And different sizes. And, yeah, and as we said, different sizes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, just set my bracket up on the bench here. I needed to move things up, get my clamp on the top, because my aim on this point is to get everything set on the bench flat across in position. So I can use the bench as a reference point now for something flat. I've made sure we're at the T-track, which I was in a little bit, so that worried me on my cross rail coming over. So fold it forward a little bit. We've already got our ream tolls. So we'll put our screw in there. Do the other one. Using the chalk, setting on the drill so it stops nicely. We're looking at things like that. Got a little bit of pull out on the top one, so I'm just going to back it out again. Push back in. Check that it's pulled up. We can take our clamp off. A tiny bit of what I got. Not there, right. Good. So we got all right shape. First bit done. So for a minute, I'm going to put that just inside our chair, just to give me a bit more room. We're done with our template there. We want those long sections that we cut out yesterday. Again, these have got that drawing bit. I've got the pencil marks on here. Got the screws where things are held together. Got my dowel pen. Oh, my dear, I've got a little bit of the recess that side, so let's go uh, that way. So that down pin was about holding things together parallel while we cut it out, work on it. There's two screws down here held things. So we can back those out. These again, just, if you like, why would class everyday screws? They're not stainless. We don't need stainless for temporary work. Just a little bit on the on the screws, Jace. Jace, a little bit of information on the screws. What screws are we so using the there, mate? The screws we said earlier are a wood spur stainless steel screw. All right. Now, the stainless steel, as we said, and we mentioned this yesterday a little bit, you want to make sure that you're not going to get any corrosion problems through the timber. Now, chestnuts for you about the best thing we said about that yesterday. I love using chestnut for this. But use chestnut with, with normal screws. It will actually cause real problems on... Gonna happen, all right. So, what Craig's just gonna look at your screw with you. We've got a camera too. I'm just gonna remount right, a couple of holes. So, there you go. So, a premium stainless, as Jason said, rightly so, for, for anything external. And that is the screw itself. Let's see, quite a cool thread. It's got the drill tip end to help bite in. And a Torx shore drive fitting. Okay, so back to that snail catcher, just to give us a start point for those. That's outside. We've reamed the holes out so the screws aren't going to be pushing the boards apart. So, boys, the hole on the front is for the bolt fitting, what we do later. We then want our bracket that's on here. So this is that one that isn't square. It's got to come up to there. So it's going to go that sort of position. So we've got our line now. We go over there and bring it into there. I want my pencil line. So I'm going to use that pencil line as the reason I've got it there. 
I could transfer it down, but I'm going to rely on getting it the right way round. Back to there. Light it up. Flash on here. Our angle comes down through. So again, I can set up. And I said about my pencil line. We've got a line I can have. I turn my bevel over. This is going to make life just a little bit easier. I've got it on the other board is where I wanted it. Down through there. Just to give me a position. I can use my block again. Checking how that looks, tying it up. Now this one, we're on the line. We haven't got to be halfway because we've drawn that line and where it is actually on the jig. So that one can be smack bang on that line. I've got to go that way in my voice. I'm trying to make sure I'm not turning it around. So I'm blocking it with my head when I do this up. Only thing I have got to go, oh, get it the right way. Turn it around that way in there. Just checking how things feel. A little bit that end. Now it's all about this thing, I suppose. We only have two hands. Clamped it in. All right, I think you can see that. So we've got clamp down in here. The bracket is underneath, clamping on. So it gives me that just that right angle support. It makes it so much easier. You haven't got to hold it. And there's nothing worse than you think about it. You're trying to screw these up. You're pushing against it. And all it does is push things away. Okay, Craig, where'd you put my... Okay. So the screws again. We can bring more hole. So small drill bit again. One in there, looks okay. Check our length where we're going to come to. That's right. Did we do that? Oh, we've got the bottom one to do. So our snail catcher is giving us a start point with the screws. I can feel where things are. We didn't do the hole for there. So let's fill that one. So one side fitted. Turn it over, clear the clutter. So this time I want to move things back a bit. We've got our position up on here, we can work to it. Got my pencil line on the top. We could use the same bracket. Or for this, could even stretch the aspect we can go with parallel bar clamp just to go on here. So I do. I'm going to bring the head back up a bit so I get a pressure point. So this again is about using the workbench. If I bring it back. As a stability point as well as something as a reference point to so its level. Up a bit there. Pencil line, I'm just checking is inside. Trying not to block too much. So we've got our point on here. I'm going to do that back screw first so I can get to that one easier. So we're going to want four, so I put them out. Drop a little bit on there. As I said, with the point, I know when we left this out, we've machined it, we've had some hot weather, then them damp stuff. Things are moving about a little bit, twisting a bit. 
That's got that held. We've got our reference point underneath, so things are sitting nicely. These three today. So we got oh fine. Oh my looks a bit like a sludge, Ben. I think we go back to just for a second. All right, so we got that there. First one. We can go up to there again. We can sit on the bench. We have the right shape. Gotta get the two inside one another. Now Craig did that where I said about the and he said about the offset, the cutout. Why do we need one smaller? Because we have those two side pieces that fit inside. So down in here, that side bit fits inside. So that's the difference of the, the length of the back rail and the front rail. Just lining up, I've got a pencil line inside. I've drawn up real, so I can bring them on. Right, you got a question? Yeah, quick question. Is is there a reason you didn't glue that component? Or you did really you, want to know? Did you forget? I'm trying to save time. <laughs> it's as simple as that. We know today is going to be a bit of a rush on how much we've got to do. So just I'm really glued, yeah. trying to save time. I also have that worry with end grain. You're going to get much glue strength, end grain to side grain. When I went to college, we discussed it heavily. And it kind of don't get a lot of structural strength out of that. But no, ideally glue it. But I'm just trying to save time. I'm sorry, all right? Um, Craig kind of knew that, I think. You kind of had that. Just, no, I believe right? you. No, so you've, you've convinced that's me. purely the reason. You didn't forget. So, no, glue it, all right? <laughs> it's as simple as that. So, it was just the fact that I know we're pushing a little bit more we got to do. On here, again, I'm looking for my pencil line. I put my weight on. I can clamp it in. That looks good. So we're equally the side. We're using the bearing surface of the bench to give us something as a reference point. We tighten that up. Now, change the screw size. That's paramount. So we're going to go down to something smaller. This is 35 mil because we've got two 19 mil layers. This will give us a part. And again, at this point, you could glue this. So internal frame could be glued to the other. And this was something I thought about earlier. Ben, go back to one for me just a second. It was something I thought about earlier. Now, my worry with this, and I know from the plans, they actually screw all the way from the outside through into that rail, which is two layers. And the, I prefer the screws to be inside and not seen. Just me. But if you glue the inner frame to the outer one and anything happens and it gets broken or you want to replace anything, you can't take it apart. So it's a bit, a little bit of swings around about, mm. doesn't it, on what you do. Um, I did kind of have that view that I would glue them. Change a bit. Slightly smaller torque head on these. These are a T20. These are in underneath the chair. I haven't counter sunk these. The screws on these, I'm just going to check how things are going to pull in. Adjust my torque setting, bring it down a little bit. So torque setting, that's that magic dial on the front of your screwdriver that no one uses. All right. Um, I use it. This is front one. So there's quite a few screws in here. There's six on each side. It's well held. You've then got the rails on the top. I'm hoping I'm not blocking too much when I come right into there. One down in here. One screw on the other side, but we know at the moment that I might have to play with things. So let's put that there. 
One up hand here again, pushing pressure on the bench to make sure we're pushing everything level. Two got our screws. Done. Hopefully. Move a few things about. Give it a frame. Spoon. Just done there for a second. So we oh. So we've got our frame done. That's the basics of the bottom of the chair. And a lot of this is a screw together type construction. As you've already said, the stainless steel screws, I love the idea of they're not going to go black or anything. They've got to stain it or anything like that. Glue it, yes, but think about where you glue it. If you damage anything, so this inner frame, you could glue. Think about what you want to do with it. Um, I think you can probably see why we said about now using dry material over something wet because you're going to glue things, it's going to hold. Craig, you got anything you want to add? No, that's it, really. I'm just going to spin the chair around. If you can take that component off just oh, for a moment, there. just so we can see. One. Yeah, take that one. All right. So the bit that we've made is this lower section here the internal bit kind of the smaller inner section that's where these all these slats are going to sit that sits on side and supports all the the seat slats okay so that's where we're at we've pretty much got that base frame done um the big panel that jason glued up at the beginning that's gonna be cut to size on the uh, next episode next wednesday to help form the back slats okay there they fan out there's slight chamfers all around so there's a little bit of work to do a little bit of router table work and next week we'll also look to obviously put in the seat slats as well and some of those are funny angles as well so we'll look at those of course we've still got to do the arms and the arm supports and bolt it all together so make sure you join us Okay. Anything else to add, Jason? We got any more questions, Mr. Colwyn? No. Nope. All right. Well, thanks for your questions today, guys. Some good questions. Thanks very much. So we will see you Tuesday. Colwyn's back in the workshop. If you've liked this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and share. It's been great to see you. Thank you. Bye-bye.